Acute myeloid leukemia is a highly aggressive cancer with few treatment options for the majority of patients. Predicting early responders to novel signaling targeted therapies holds a great promise to improve the chances of successful recovery. In our project, we are collecting longitudinal data from Canadian, Dutch and Norwegian biobanks and we develop a translational approach to provide tailored treatments for acute myeloid leukemia. Single cell technologies are used to map the clonal architecture of AML patients and to characterize the activation dynamics of signal transaction pathways. We apply machine learning together with mathematical modeling to develop a classification system for AML with single cell resolution. The deployed models are used to provide tailored treatment options for individual patients with the ability to identify novel therapeutic targets. Our translational approach pushes forward a personalized medicine strategy. With our strategy, we promise to transform aggressive leukemia to a manageable disease. You probably heard that seeing is believing, which is why microscopes have enabled countless scientific breakthroughs. And while the resolution of microscopes has improved greatly in recent years, the best of them still rely on fluorescent dyes, which can damage the cells that are being imaged. In the NanoRead project, we will exploit the complicated ways light is scattered within cells, which will allow us to build a new optical nanoscope that doesn't need any of those harmful guys. 3D imaged will instead be reconstructed from scattered lights using advanced prism that we are developing now. This takes a lot of processing power, which is why parallel computing is essential to see the image in real time. At the end, we will have a new super resolution level freedom scope. In the Biosement 2.0 project, we use bacteria that produce organic acids to dissolve calcium carbonate and bacteria performing ureolysis to induce formation of calcium carbonate crystals. We create both a metabolic model of the organic acid producing strain and a geochemical model looking at microscale microbe mineral interactions. These modeling approaches are intended to help us make directed improvements during creation of bioconcrete. And here is how the process of creating bioconcrete bricks currently looks like. The core is formed by a brick vessel containing sand and the urease producing bacterial strain. In programmable process cycles, liquids like the calcium and the urea source are then pumped through the brick vessel, where ureolysis and subsequent calcium carbonate reprecipitation take place. Spent liquids are collected separately. After some time, the material solidifies. Like this, we are currently able to create bricks of one-third the size of a standard brick.
six years ago when the first call for Digital Life Norway projects came out. Uh, we were kind of forced into talking to people from other departments, other disciplines that we hadn't collaborated with before. And so for the first time environmental toxicologists and bioinformaticians and mathematicians started working together on the Atlantic Cod in a systems toxicology perspective. We see that we have created a new and shared language within the project. We have uh, produced a line of um, super PhD and master students who have been uh, trained in a unique transdisciplinary way. Uh, we want to thank Digital Art Norway uh, with uh, giving us this opportunity. And we also want to thank this guy, more than 1,500 Atlantic Cod who has contributed to the project with providing their biological material. All cancer patients are different and thus cancer treatments may not always work for everyone. Each person needs a personalized treatment and it's difficult to predict if it will be effective. In Pinpoint we want to predict treatment efficacy. We use ex vivo drug sensitivity data from primary samples, bioinformatics and statistical analysis, and we integrate responsible research and innovation practices. One of our major strengths is the semi-automatized high-throughput drug screening platform, which allows us to screen hundreds of drugs and drug combinations, generating big amounts of data to analyze in our bioinformatics platform. Pinpoint aims to create a clinical decision support system that uses patient drug sensitivity, genomic and clinical data to model responses and make treatment suggestions. In 2020, two scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the development of the CRISPR method for DNA editing. Many people emphasize the promising benefits of gene editing technologies for dealing with uncertainties for the future, such as food availability, pest control, and the impending effects of climate change. For example, scientists use a CRISPR technology to genetically engineer rice with high levels of beta carotene, and the consumption of golden rice has been approved in more than five countries. Even though CRISPR technology is increasingly used in scientific community, the majority of European citizens have a skeptical attitude towards this technological breakthrough. So what are the reasons for this skepticism? Gene editing? isn't yet as predictable or reliable as promoters say. In 2019, there was a failed attempt to make a hornless cattle by Recombinetics company in Minnesota, where the gene-edited cows carried unintended DNA segments. Targeted gene editing using CRISPR is rooted in being accurate. But how accurate is it? In our project called EcoGene, we take a systematic approach to study the biological and socio-economic aspects of CRISPR technology in aquaculture. In our lab, we're looking for off-target changes caused by CRISPR gene editing in Nile tilapia. To do this, we will first design guard RNA that is specific for the target gene and make a CRISPR gene editing construct. Then we will inject this construct into freshly fertilized eggs. Once the constructs have successfully edited the embryos, 
We can analyze the entire genome to not only determine the effect at the targeted site, but also how it has affected the whole fish. This way we can better understand the collateral effect of CRISPR technology. We will also look at what can happen in following generations. The goal of our project is not only to investigate the collateral effect of CRISPR technology, but also to ensure that the new knowledge, technology, and innovation is sustainable and can address societal demands in a responsible way. Thank you.